Uh, Olivia, great. thank you so much for being on our show. Thank you for having me. It's an honor. Thank you. Uh, I'm kind of tripping right now because uh, we have so many like mutual connections. Yeah. We had a fundraiser, what, a, about a month or two ago? Like a couple weeks ago, actually. Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. As of like this taping, right? As of, right, as of this taping, when this airs, it'll be like a month ago or True. two months ago. It was in September, okay. uh, to <laughs> to clarify that. Okay. Uh, and we have an annual kind of a birthday birthday celebration slash fundraiser where we raise money for Momentum Wheels for Humanity, and we um, we're connected to Matt Adler, mm -hmm. Dean Cameron, mm -hmm. Laura San Giacomo. Uh, John Philbin. John, John Philbin. My, room, my roommate. My roommate. Right. Your <laughs> roommate. <laughs> yeah. Before we get into anything <laughs> career-wise, so you you lived with John Philbin John, and Dean Cameron? John, well, no. I, Dean Cameron was there a lot, but okay. I didn't live with him. He, he was my boyfriend for a little while. Okay. And uh, John was a roommate. Who else was that roommate? Michael Weil. We, we were a bunch of actors in this house. It was like an old uh, 1920s house in the Hollywood Hills. Oh, cool. And Daryl Hannah was there a lot. She was best friends with Hillary Shapiro, who lived there. It was it was crazy. It was a crazy house. It was it was really it actually worked, you know. And that's and that's uh, that's what I lived. John. I'm trying to think of who else. Oh, Eric Stoltz was there all the time because Eric was best friends with Dean and and John. Wow. And and uh, what else? We're Let's talking see. like mid '80s, right? Yeah. Early '80s. Mid '80s, and okay. then uh, and Charlie Sheen. And Chris uh, Chris Penn, when, when he was alive, they used to come over all the time. Wow. It was like it was like it was just it was just the eighties. Was it crazy? Was it chaotic? Was it artistic? Was it was. It, it was. It, I I don't know. It was kind of it was kind of crazy because some of us were kind of crazy. But it was like, yeah. um, I mean, it, it worked. It worked yeah. because every right. everybody was working. Like everybody was a working actor, and uh, and it was it was just cool. Something about that vibe too. At that time, so many of our favorite movies, obviously, are from the 80s. Uh -huh. And so many of those actors that you just mentioned, including yourself, are, are in so many of the movies that we love. Yeah. Um, I believe we were talking about Tough Turf on the fundraiser. So and John goes, Olivia. <laughs> Olivia was in that. And Dean's like, oh, Olivia. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, we we may go all over the place okay. uh, career wise, but but you started out like as a kid actor. Right? Yeah, I was five years old um, in New York, and I went to dancing school. I was I was going to dancing school. I think from four years old, I was taking ballet. Oh. It, but but it, I was in New York at this point at Phil Black's. It was like this dance dance place that all the kids were actors, were child actors. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to do what my friends were doing. I wanted to do what my peers were doing. And so my mom got, went to a manager with me, and I, they signed me. And I got, like, my first commercial. I did, did like, 55 national commercials back then. And I was doing wow. ch shows, you know, stage shows. I, I did at, at five, you had 55 <laughs> national commercials? Well, That's I insane. Sta I started, yeah. I was, like, I had, I had and, I, and there was more commercials. There were voiceovers. There was everything. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I, I did a couple soap operas, I think, in New York. And then... Um, I did a show. There's a show called The Big Blue Marble, and I did a few of those. And uh, and then I did Gypsy with Angela. Was that a TV Lansbury. show? Yeah, it was or? a TV okay. show. Yeah, so I did television, okay. and then okay. um, and then I was doing like uh, I was tour touring with shows. So I had to be like seven years old, or yeah, because you you couldn't perform unless you were seven, I think. Mm. Okay. I think. And so. What, uh, Gypsy with Angela Lansbury. I played Baby June, and we toured. Oh, we, it was it was like theater in the round. Oh, wow. it, was, it was intense. Yeah. And um, and then uh, and then I did a show called Panama Hattie, and that was it was supposed to go to Broadway, right? And we we took it because um, Ann Miller was the star of it, the tap dancer. Mm -hmm. I tapped, and um, so but I had a cho I had a choice between that show and this other show. And I chose that show, and the other show was called Annie. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think I've heard of that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So um, that, so that, so and 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 Panama Hattie didn't end up going to Broadway. It was really fun, though. I think I won um, some kind of award. I think I won the the. It was called uh, the New York Sh Circle Critics Award. It was, I was the, the first child actor to ever win that award, and then Ann Miller told my mom and I that I needed to come, come to Hollywood. I needed to be in L.A. because I did everything I could do in New York at that point. Mm. 
and at age seven and a half. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's done everything. It's, My gosh. Well, actually, time I was, to move. I was older. I was so I was eleven when I moved. Oh, okay, and so much right, older. Yeah. Oh, so much. <laughs> God, and, eleven. And, you're like, yeah, been there, done that. Yeah, that was it. That was my catchphrase at eleven. <laughs> and I and I and I we went we came out here and then uh, and then my dad and my dog followed. They we came like in cars. It was like uh, and then and I, I just started working immediately. It's like. Yeah. You know, Annie was right. We, I just started working immediately, and I don't know. It's like I gr- I grew up in front of a lot of people yeah. on TV. Yeah. You know, right? It's it, a lot of people feel they know me because you know what I mean. I like it was like I was there. Right. A little unsettling. Um, <laughs> exactly. But it really is. I, but can we yeah. back up for a second? So you're five, and your parents. Set the stage a little bit. You're you're living in New York City. Yeah, we we we, we were started in Long Island, Save the Long Island, okay. and then we went to Forest Hills, Queens for a couple of years, and then I ended up in the city because we were doing everything in the city. Everything was around my career. So yes, okay. I I feel like looking back, <laughs> there's a you know there's a lot of pressure. I think and but I and I I understood you know, but it's like I was a ham. I wanted the attention, yeah. but at the same time. I like it, it was it was important, you know, that I performed well. I, like it was really important. Yeah, right. There was a there was another aspect to it. I mean, I mean, the the other aspect was huge. My 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 brother was killed in Vietnam, and I oh, was man. four years old, and mm-hmm. it was my mom's first kid, and it's just you know, it, I was like I was like the savior. I was like like she got me into you know it made her happy, and yeah. I knew that. I knew that it was her happiness, so that was like the huge pressure, you know. But I wanted to make my mom happy, and she, she, I mean, she wanted to be a movie star herself. Mm-hmm. Like that was um, her dream, and she got she, she had a story that she won uh, a trip to Hollywood from her acting class when she was sixteen years old. They were going to test her at um, MGM. She was doing a screen test, and she got to the airport, and she. She chickened out. She didn't go on the mm. Oh, wow. And so that was, like, her thing. Like, she, she – and she should have been a movie. She was beautiful. She was, like, total blonde, beautiful, and funny, you know? But, yeah, so I – so it came on to me, and I, you know, I internalized that. I had a, lot of, a little bit of pressure. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And so – so your mom sort of funneled all that sort of that the missed opportunity yep. is now yeah. now your opportunity. Yeah. And yeah. so you are being kind of um, taken around at age five to auditions. At, at what are you going to school? Are you a tutor? I, I went to school, but you know, I did, I, my school was a professional children's school. Okay. And um, all the kids were actors and stuff. So, but I had school, but then I. On the set, I would have a tutor. Right. You okay. know, um, at Lincoln Square Academy, my school was. Uh, every, everybody went there. It was like Robbie Benson. I don't know if you remember. Oh, of course. Like, it was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it was like I love all, Robbie Benson. It was. Yeah. It was. I mean, it, it was. It was fun. They had talent shows. It was like amazing. It was. You know, it was kind of like. It kind of like the Fame School. Yeah. Which is which is the show. Which you were right, part right. of. Yeah. But it was the real. You know, it was not the Fame School. Was called P P C S. I think okay. probably pre- performing. <laughs> PC something. Anyway, that it was like the other one. The movie, the other fame school. Wow, you know? that's cool. Yeah. And Robbie, obviously, you know, he was walking around. I'm Robbie Benson. Yeah. Hi. He he donated a ping pong table to the school. I remember that after she graduated, <laughs> we had a ping pong table in the, right. in the in the uh, lunchroom. The Robbie Benson ping pong. Yeah. Inaugural table. Yeah. 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 <laughs> when you come out to LA, uh, were you living in? Hollywood proper, or were you in the valley, or what? We, we were in Doheny Drive was where we first moved. So it was like mm-hmm. the, the edge of Beverly Hills, um, and uh, we, my, my mom's best friend and our friend was Ann Miller, and she's she's a total movie star. I mean, she was like old school movie star. So yeah. she lived in Beverly Hills proper. She probably helped us find the place because we were really close to her, uh-huh. and we used to go over to her house all the time. And she had she had. The house was white. It was all like a white shag rug, and she had two white poodles, and Gosh. and um, I mean, it was it was it, it was normal for me. It, everything seemed normal for me. It wasn't yeah. normal, I yeah. don't think, you know. No, but um, <laughs> it was a trip. No, and I and yeah. and then and then I, we moved to West LA. We moved to Bundy Drive. That's where I grew up, and okay. I ended up surfing. I began. I got into the, so I was on the beach. I was a beach person when I wasn't working. 
So um, awesome. I, I surfed Bay, Bay Street with the Dogtown Boys. I was like the only girl at that hey. point. At that point, there weren't. No, I don't think there were other girls surfing, and so I used yeah. to I used to either skate or ride my bike with my surfboard under my arm to the beach. That's badass. I mean that, and that was. I mean that was. Those are good memories, you know. Yeah, it's like no I, doubt. And and see, I guess I wanted a little bit more of that. I would I would have liked to have it consistent. It wasn't consistent because I come out of it, have to work all the time. Right, right. So, you know. Did you and John Philbin go surfing together? No, I don't think we did. No, I didn't. I, I, I didn't surf for that long because, this is a bad story, my mom gave uh-huh. my surfboard away when I came home one day. Um, oh, I, I no. looked, I didn't look, I, I, I was, I almost like drowned. I went, I went out in a, Eight foot waves, and there was a there was a warning, you know, at the beach, you no, know, not supposed to go out. Orange cones. Yeah, yeah. And I went out. I was you always were like, like, "Fuck that, I fuck was, you, cones." <laughs> I, was, yeah. I was like a daredevil, you know. Yeah. So I go out and I had a leash on my board, and I take the first wave, and I get, I wipe out, I get pulled under, and I can't get up oh, because man. I'm with a leash. Yeah. And yeah. And next oh, no. thing I know, there's um. There's, there's a guy saving me, saving my life, a lifeguard, and I got poked in the neck by, I had the leash on, I po- got poked in the Ooh, neck, and no. so I was bleeding from the neck when I came home. It was bad. Oh, no. So she, she, she gave away my surfboard the next yes. day. How old, how old are we talking here? How old 16. Yeah, okay. Oh, man. Yeah. That's traumatic. Yeah, that, that, was, that was one of my first traumatic <laughs> yeah. experiences. I mean, you're lucky it didn't <laughs> affect your uh, I know. It's, uh, I'm or like, kill I'm, you. I was, yeah, yeah. Yes. no, yeah. I was okay. Well, that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wow. So you were like in in the in, in it. Yes, and then, and then there's a whole other side. I've, I've got like, so the other side of my story is from 16... On for a long time, I had I had seventeen major abdominal surgeries. Just so nobody knew that I was a sick kid. Also, so I had this disease called ulcerative colitis. Okay. And I was the first ever child to undergo this surgery that saved my life, no, and I was really. the eleventh human being to ever have it at UCLA. So they 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 operate on me and every like every couple of years I'd have surgery and nobody knew I was you know I was doing that wow so I had that story and then uh, you said 11 different surgeries that were kind seven, of like 17 17 that were, you were the 11th person you were the yeah. 11th person to have this but yeah. is it 17 stages of the same surgery? No, or is no. It, no. It, 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 a lot of it was they were figuring it out because I was the first I was, right. you know what I mean yeah they, they just yeah. had to end and it's like they had my colon taken out. It's like it's a major deal. Yes. Yeah, I haven't had yes. any surgery. To, like I stopped having surgery at thirty years old. It's so weird. Oh my god! Wow! Yeah. Wow! Yep. Yeah. Thank God that, you're and, still here. But that all <laughs> and that all led to something else, and that led to addiction. Yeah. I became addicted to Demerol when I was from that surgery that started, and so um, I had that going on. I got into drugs and then I got clean at like like uh, 12 years ago yeah it's like it's been it's been a trip it's, it's been it's been thank you it's just been like everything under the sun I will, will write my memoirs at some point yeah yeah you should because you, you yeah. I mean we, we talked a little bit before we started this how you have such a strong fan base from your childhood years um, and people want to know a lot about that. And then you have, obviously, from what you've done uh, in the 80s, you know, yeah. and beyond, but also your music career, too. You yeah, know? there's that. <laughs> there's so much, so many dynamics to who you are as a person. Yeah, that was, that was a big, that was, I mean, really, honestly, music is what got me into acting. It's like I, instead of it was a ham, it's like I love to perform, but I, I sang. I was, I was musical, and I mm-hmm. danced, and um and I, I we, had, we had a piano, a baby grand piano, when I was a little kid, and I, I picked out a song with two hands, and I made up a song. I was like four years old. Wow. And um, my parents, and then I went to Carnegie Hall. It, it, at at five, I was put in Carnegie Hall for piano. Okay. <laughs> so wow. I was like, I was like, you know, I was really musical, and then um, and I did some music stuff. I did Fame. Yeah. And then there were there were a couple other things, other shows that I did, and then um. I was acting for I guess twenty years at that point when I just said I want to do my music. When you were eleven, you were tw- been acting for twenty. Years. Right, exactly. <laughs> Pretty much. So I, I just yeah. wanted to I wanted to pursue music, and I, and I was always like that's what I was into. I was like always into bands and going to see people what, play. What bands? Like wh- who were some of your oh, influences? Gosh. Well, 
well, so it started in, in the, the, the '70s. I loved Led Zeppelin and Queen yeah. and Cheap Trick. Those are my those were my no. top. I mean, you're... those are, those are my top three. Like, you know, right. when I was growing up, and I loved Freddie Mercury. I was like so into. Um, I mean, yeah, it's just like you know, what I just found out my agent, the to- the head of the agency, Mike. Eisenstein, he Eisenstadt, he um, worked with Freddie Mercury. Oh, mm. wow! Before he was an agent, and so I'm going to find out more about. One that. of my yeah. first concerts I ever yeah. went to was Queen when I was uh, six or seven years old yeah. in Detroit, yeah. Pontiac, Michigan. Yeah, I saw him. And I said, "That's who I want to be." That guy, um, that ama- confidence, amazing. Yeah, yeah. I got I got out of um, I got out of high school because I wrote I wrote um, I I I would write I'm, I'm a writer so I I wrote an essay. I wrote an essay in, for English, and, and one of the subjects was Freddie Mercury, but it was it was like a secret life of Walter Mitty. Like, I did another version of it oh, for cool. Olivia, yeah. and I was Freddie Mercury Amazing. in it. Amazing. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Love that. That's a, that would be a trip to... I know, that, I'd like to find that. Right. But um, you released a, an album? I or? never released an album. I've, I've, okay. I've been... Um, I've been on some compilation albums. I've I've had songs in movies, so I've had a lot. A lot I've played songs in films. You have, and, and I did a little bit of digging. I found some <clears throat> live musical performances of yours. Oh wow! Um, at a club performance you did maybe what, about ten years ago. Which what was that? What was that? Which oh, Fado? I feel like it was in South LA. Maybe F- Fado Do. Yeah, that that's a great club. That was a speakeasy in the nineteen. So cool! Oh, like your wow. music was really really great. Thank you. I, I signed I signed to Warner Chapel. So. What happened? Yeah. Well, this happened. So I, you know, everybody said, well, keep acting, you know, what are you doing? Because I was, like, on the verge of becoming a household name. Like, I really was. And I, right. and I, people, people like Laura Dern and uh, George Clooney, like, those are my friends. And George Clooney used to come over to my apartment, my first place, and he'd bring, like, a case of beer, and he'd, he'd drink, we'd drink beer, and then by the, like the fifth beer, he'd start crying. He'd cry, and like I'm sorry, George, I'm telling you. He would start crying. And he'd say, "I can't get a, an A movie. I, I'm just getting C movies, and I'm related to people." And he, got, he, he was so upset, he was gonna quit. Wow. And I'm like, George, just hang in there. I go, give it, and I go, give it five more years. Give it five, and in five years, he got ER. And wow. I said, give it five yeah. more years, and just don't, don't pay attention. Just it's gonna happen. And then what happened was, I was gonna quit, and then um. Everybody said you should just hang in there, and I just, I just was done at that point. I, j- I just didn't want, to, wasn't having the passion, you know. Mm. And I was playing music, and um, I had a song in the Doors film. Yeah. And then, uh, and then I had, I, I formed a band, and then we play out, and then I don't know how, how did it happen. Oh, I do know how it happened. And then I got a manager like almost right away, and the manager. His name was Charlie Brown, <laughs> and he managed Jane's Addiction. Mm. So he was, like, getting us out places, you know. Get, where I was going, like, I would call it, like, auditions for labels. I'd go with my guitar on, right. and I'd play the music. Yeah. And um, and then I was going to be signed to Chrysalis <laughs> Records, and um, it didn't work out. Like, it, it, something happened where the A&R guy kind of messed up, and, and he felt bad, so he brought me over to Warner Chapel to the vice president because he had another artist signed there, and I got signed by the vice president. They, 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 I was playing, playing in his office. And so, and I, so it was like six months later into my music, like I got signed to Warner Chapel, Warner Brothers. Whoa. So that was huge. And, yeah. um, and then, by the way, I never hear those stories. I hear those stories. People coming into the studio or into an executive's office, yeah. start playing. It, it was my story. But, yeah, that's your story. And I didn't get signed like right away from. Like, he go come out to see me play, and then I, I remember they coming out to Dragonfly. I remember Dragonfly? Yeah, yeah. And so, and then I had another thing where um, I performed at Dragonfly, and then Dave Jordan, who was my record producer. He, he he was going to sign me to Atlantic Records. He wanted to sign our band. Okay. I mean, it just it was it went on. But see, I fell in love with Dave Jordan, and I quit music. That's when I quit my career. So oh. it's, it's I didn't become the, <laughs> I didn't become the rock star, but um, I still I still had a lot of experience. Did you record an album that just never got released? So this is the thing, Dave. Um, I'm finding a lot of recordings now. I, mean, I did the bet. We did. I mean, like amazing stuff. And I've I I've, bet I've got I've got stuff. I'm I'm. I'm, people are send, starting to send me stuff, and I have—I definitely have an album source. I'm going to release something, because I mean, 
I, I'm so proud of that music. It's like it's 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 awesome. Yeah, you need to. You need to. I know. I think it should. And then we're doing we're doing like a a fan site, um, OliviaBarish.com. Okay. And um, I wanted to like, put so, like Alison Ongram was saying, you have got to put your music up yeah. there. Your friends friends are gonna freak out. Yeah. So um, yeah, we're, we're gonna we have a lot of stuff to do, but it'll be cool. And you mentioned Allison. Obviously, uh, you guys were on well, not around the same time, but Little yeah. House on the Prairie. Yeah, Alison Ongram. She's. She's awesome. She's like my my angel. She's like my guardian angel. Oh, that's great. I mean, if right. we've had a lot of actors on our show who are also musicians. Mm-hmm. Dean Cameron for one, yes. you know, and uh, David Patrick Kelly, who we had oh, last wow. year, and okay. he's a, so talented. And, yeah. And and then you you see these people on screen like yourself, mm-hmm. and you know them from that point of view, right? And then you hear them as a musician, and you go, wait, what? Well, this is a whole other facet. Right? Yeah. And it was and back in 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 the eighties. And even, well, in the 90s, it was uncool to be an actor who was a musician. They, right. They, 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 they mm. didn't like, they, it wasn't oh, yeah. cool. Keanu Reeves got, like, crapped on all the time oh, because my God. he was in a band. Dog, dog Star. Dog Star, yeah. Dog Star. Um, it, was, it, was, it was just, wasn't, it wasn't cool. It wasn't accepted. And yeah. so, basically, I quit acting. Like, I, I left my agency. I did everything. And I just went into music so I'd be taken seriously. It's mm. tricky, though, because, like, you're an artist, right? Whether you're an actor, right. a painter, a musician, that's right, that's it, right. an artist is an artist, right? That's right. But just be accepted. It's such a different time that was. I mean, it was because I mean, I could, I could see. I mean, who was who was an actor? Like Rick Springfield was an actor. Who Which was that's a, a perfect example yeah. right there. But it was like I was I was so into like being cool. It was like I was I was very <laughs> I was very into that. It's like it had to be. I did. I want. I was punk. I was a punk rocker. I was yeah. like in that scene. Yeah. So I did. I never wanted to come off as commercial, you know. And then I was signed to Warner Chapel. I mean, it was like I was on that route in a way. And I and I stopped myself. I I I wouldn't allow myself to be um, like I wanted to be promoted as as part of a band. I didn't want right. to be Olivia Barish or so on. Yep. Which I mean, I I you know I messed up myself. Uh, I messed up a lot of things if I if I would have just just gone with the flow. Mm-hmm. But I was always going against the flow, you know. It's such a different time, though, and you don't have the hi- the foresight, you know, to no. see that. Yeah, and they, and they kept me on the shelf at Warner's. I was like, I was, you yeah. know, and I had and I had all these songs. I had I was a prolific writer. I had like, a, God, I remember, I remember, and that's the place I'm going to find some of my music. I used to record in their studio with friends. They come, okay. I mean, and my friends were like Xander Schloss would come down from Repo Man, mm. and he, I mean, I had I had a. Uh, I worked at the Viper Room. Is another thing. So okay. I, I worked at the Viper Room, and I was I was playing with um, uh, Ben Mize from Counting Crows. I had like I had Tommy Stinson from The Replacements was my bass player on Whoa. this one thing. I mean, it was yeah. really kind of incredible. I I, th- I look back and it's like, wait, did I know that person? I did. Oh, I jammed. <laughs> I jammed with. Um, I know that person. <laughs> the Pretenders drummer with um, he came down to our to our music to our rehearsal space yeah. from the Viper Room. We just went down one night to play because so our drummer we would have a drummer and play. I mean, That's it's wild. like cra- cra- crazy. That's wild. Yeah. yeah. But it was like normal. But it was like normal to yeah. me, yeah. which is. But you know, it, everything's relative. Well, well, I mean, also yeah. like as someone who's had not the same experience, but where you're you're getting to play with someone who you're in awe with, yeah. and you realize. Yeah, but we're just artists. Yeah. We're just musicians. Yeah. You know, this no, person it, just happens to ha- be on a whole other playing field. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was, it was, I mean, it was really, I mean, I, I, I look back also and it's like, yeah, there, there's a charmed part of my life. Okay. It was mm-hmm. like, and but from people from the outside, they're like, Olivia, you did everything you, you had, you know, but it's like, and then I had my illness. There, there, there's, there's, you know, a lot of everything. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't smooth sailing. It was very. It bumpy. definitely wasn't. I mean, and the and the, and the 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 drug addiction aspect. I mean, that it was. I mean, it was like. It, you know, I'm a I'm a whole person, but and it's amazing that you're, I'm sitting here with you guys because yeah. there's a lot of stuff that maybe I should not have been. You know. Well, we that's a similar vibe, a similar conversation we've had with people too. <laughs> that you survived through that. Yes. Where not so many, not everybody did. No, you know? not a lot of people haven't, and no. so you know, I mean, it's really sad, and and. But you know, I, and as, as I said, it's all relative. Like I, I, I didn't. I mean, I knew that it was a really big thing that I was having these surgeries. I mean, I, I knew that, but I was determined. I was determined to not dwell in it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? For real. And, and yeah. I and I was determined to be the best I could, and like and just really just show up. That's and great I did. Answer. And I did. Yeah. I mean, I, it's it's a 
a secret, like I call it my mom's and I, you know, our secret. It's kind of, and I, I talked about it on Allison's show for the first time. And people were like, really? Are you, you know, but yeah, I did, I did good keeping the secret. But, you know, again, these are, these are things that, you know, they affected me internally. I didn't, I, I had secrets to, to, that I couldn't tell people, you know. Right. Right, and I imagine the recovery would probably keep you out of working for a little bit, right? Yeah, I mean, but I, I would recover fast. I was like, you know, I was like, <laughs> I was like so determined. I was so self, I was so self-willed. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'd say. Yeah. And, then, and I would just like, yeah, I mean, I, people didn't know. And one thing I did, because I was in the punk scene, I remember I would have, I get to have surgery. I say get to have surgery because that was when I got to dye my hair pink or purple i didn't have to be on camera yeah right. so i got right. to be normal <laughs> that was right. like that was like my normal time i mean it's yeah so i just it, i i say what i what do i say to people i lived i feel i really felt like this i felt like this at 21 so can imagine now i felt i lived three lifetimes at 21 years old it's crazy and i and really and it did have all those aspects like there was the there was the punk scene. There was the medical scene. There was the drug. I mean, it's just, and then 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 there was the performance. You showed up on camera on the set, ready to go. And I and I was like, okay, I was like a real professional kid. You know? Clearly, because you were like one consistent gig after another. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, did, and I'm sure I know you talked about this uh, before, but the trauma that you might have endured from uh, your stint on Little House on a Prairie on the Prairie. Uh, it's probably the most infamous episode, yeah. I believe. Two episodes, two yeah. Episodes, two episodes, that's right. No, but yeah. And then they, uh, they you know, it's funny, though, because now I'm like immersed in the little house world suddenly. But it's <laughs> yeah. like um, I didn't I didn't notice that it was traumatic <laughs> like I, because I was acting. Like right. it was I, – I really was – I was – I wasn't a method actor. Mm -hmm. And if I was, then you take it to the set and then, you know, I don't, I don't right. know. I didn't notice anything weird about it. I just, I just, but I remember what I do remember was because uh, we we just did a podcast in Oklahoma. I did a little tour with the Little House people, and there, everybody was talking about how they were so welcome to the show. They felt at home when they were on the show, and, mm -hmm. and it was a family and all that stuff. And I remember my thing was I was very isolated in that show because it was so heavy. Yeah. And Michael Landon worked really closely with me, and but I it was just, it was like. It, I didn't have the same experience of, of being like, it felt welcomed in that th those episodes, but it was uh, it was heavy, you know. So I knew that it was heavy, but then when it was over, I was surfing again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you had your other life. Yeah, you're one of three lives that you were leaving. Exactly. <laughs> right. Well, and the welcoming aspect, are you talking about guest stars like yourself? Well, like, no. Like... Th this is all regular. So I'm. Right. I, when I did this tour with like I'm. I'm considered like a regular facet of little. It's so strange. Like I've been; those two shows have made such a great impact right. that people think of me like they wanted my autograph from that show. It's like it's so I, I'm really honored. Like so, yeah. I know right when I realized on that level, it was a, a couple of weeks ago. I'm I'm sitting at, behind a table next to Alice and the other table, and and then uh, Dean from you know the the. It's like it was crazy. Like all these little house people and all these fans. And they all want my autograph, and they're people coming up to me crying. They were crying. They were very upset that I died in it. And it's like I realized I did a good job. Like I did my job well. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. and I and I and to move to see these people that you move, and it's all these years later. You know, it's like uh, it's really that was that was a good feeling. Like that's the thing about doing these fan these fan events. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, it's great. So that I, I got that. So I mean, it's just I just it's been it's been a real trip. I'm coming out again. It's like I'm you know for real. I'm, yeah, that's the thing. You know, I, um, obviously there's there is a huge following with Little House. It was yeah. so groundbreaking, so, ground, so uh, important for so many people. Mm -hmm. But where I go is like you said in the '80s, the mid '80s with like Repo Man. Yeah. That was a must have been a trip. Can we go back in time yeah. to eighty four? Well, you probably filmed that in eighty three, right? Yeah, we filmed it in eighty three. Okay, and um, it was so Repo Man was like at that point it was it was the most unique pro project. Like like it was a film, it was my first feature film. I did right. other feature films when I was a kid. I think little little parts, but it was my first starring role yeah. in a feature. And um, it wasn't like a normal feature. It was like. It was like it was like a family. That was like a family. Like the, Repo Man, everybody everybody came out of a lot of people came out of UCLA. They were mm. in film school together. Okay. And um, 
We just, I mean, we all, we did everything together. It was like, I was on the set, so I wasn't in every part of the film, yeah. but I was on the set every night. Harry Dean Stanton was there every night. It was like, it was, um, mm -hmm. it was just an unusual, it was, I think it's an unusual experience that everybody had. Well, you it's know? an unusual film. I mean, and it, it's it totally is, it is the definition of what a cult movie is, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, it was, I mean, yeah, and, and I, I knew, I knew, okay, so I knew it was great because, um, my my agent did not want me to go on the audition. They, really? They, they, and I got the audition. <laughs> That's okay. how you knew it was great. <laughs> I got the audition from, um, there was a guy named Del Zamora, who plays one of the Rodriguez brothers yep. in the film. But he was doing stand-in work be before that. And, okay. and I, I, was on a, I was in a show called The Young Landlords. It was one of the musical things I did. It was a P PBS, PBS movie. And Del was one of the stand-ins. There were four of us. And... <clears throat> And he and we became friends, and he's like, "You should go up for this movie that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this film, and uh, and it's called. And I think he, I think it was called Ruben. And he goes, and he goes, you, you, you really write for the punk rock girl. So I originally went up for the other role. Okay. And I wanted to be the punk rock girl. I thought, I thought how perfect. So the audition was in Venice on a Sunday afternoon. Weird. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, and so Weird. my right. my agents. I'm, yeah. I, I told my agent I'm, yeah. go, I'm going in there, and they're like, uh, "We don't we don't know who the, this yeah. production company is, and it's a Sunday, yeah. and you, you, yeah. know, you don't have to go." And I and I I went anyway because I I, I just I had yeah. a feel, it, it, it sounded I wanted to be the punk rock girl, so. I read. I, I, it was well, like, like you said, you, you 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 don't really go with the flow, right? Exactly. So the flow is telling you don't go to the Venice exactly. on a Sunday, and you're like, I'm, 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 I'm going. I'm that's going to that's the, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I went. So I went on the Sunday, and then I and I and I was screen tested like in in the garage. It was like Alex Cox and Peter McCarthy's garage. <laughs> Alex Cox, by the way, sit in Nancy for one. I mean, he's I know. an amazing director. I know. So so we're so we're 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 in the garage and. There's a camera, and I screen tested with Dick Rude, who played uh, what, what's, what's the character? How can I forget his name? But he, he's one of the punk rockers. And Zach will get it to you in and, 15 seconds. Yeah, Say bye. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> right. Dialing he, up now. He, um, he played Duke. Duke. There. Thank you. <laughs> so he he was. I mean, he, I thought he was going to play Emilio's role because he he tested with me, and I, and I was like, I I did I I didn't know what I, I was I was doing the other role first, and then. Alex stops me. He comes over with a script, and he goes, "Would you mind looking at this uh, this other character?" And he goes, I, "He goes, uh, Layla." He goes, "He goes, I wrote it for like a, a forty year old woman." But he goes, "I just, <laughs> he goes, I just want, he goes, I want to just, I just have a feeling, I want to see you do it." I so, wrote it for a forty year old woman. And so I looked at it on the side, and, and I did it. And then, and then he talks to me afterwards, and I was going to England. So at that point, oh. I was going to London, okay. and. And he goes, he goes, can I have your phone number there? He, and I knew I got it, you know? Yeah. And so I, it was a while, but he called me, and I came back to do it. My agents, I think, I'm, I'm pretty sure they said, don't bother, don't bother coming back. It's not going to be, it's like a little, you know? Yeah. The, I mean, nobody knew. Like, we didn't, I didn't know that either. I didn't know what it was going to become. Right. Well, I just knew you never was, do. I, mean, I knew it was going to be fun, yeah. right? It yeah. Was, it was cool, cool people, and uh, I wanted to do it. And so that's that was repo man. It checks all the boxes. It's got a phenomenal cast. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's got a original story, and yeah. then the yeah. soundtrack is kick ass. Yeah. So, you know, it, was, it the soundtrack was amazing. That that's what made the film. That's what it had a second chance because the film got buried. Oh yeah, totally. It did not do yeah. well initially. It got totally. I mean, it we we got what was called a, a negative pickup. So we were we were shooting, and you know it was. It's considered low budget now. I mean, right. it's kind of it was like a million points something. It was it wasn't a, yeah. not for nowadays, you know. But anyway, but and then and then we were seeing dailies, and they and some executives came to the dailies, and we got picked up on a negative pickup. Okay. But that was kind of a curse because mm. Universal didn't know it wasn't a Universal type film, you know. It no, was, right? No, it's an indie film. I mean, it should be. Yeah. And Alex Cox did something. I mean, I, maybe I'm wrong, but I think I'm not right. <laughs> Am I not wrong? He, <laughs> he did something. He pissed somebody off at Universal. Like, somebody did not want the film to go anywhere. I mean, seriously. Cause, and, he, and Alex was no, you know, he would do that. He, he, yeah. he talked about going against the grain, you know. He, he was like, and so, it's, it's a, I remember there's a story. Peter McCarthy, he's one of the producers, he and Alex went up to Universal to the executive's office and, 
they were, you know, with the people that were the Black they, Tower. They were, they yeah, they were with the and and then they come downstairs and the, the meeting is over, and then they there's a dumpster by the front of the building and they they see pictures from Repo Man in the dumpster. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh no! Oh, and and, and, and uh, Alex and Peter like went into the dumpster and got them fetched them out. And that's that's what they thought of Repo Man and wow. Universal. That that I mean that's like the perfect. Isn't that a great analogy? Like that's it, what happened. Yeah. How was the meeting? Well, <laughs> we had we had some pictures in the dumpster, yeah. and so and so like we, we was out for like a week, I think, in the theaters, and then and then what happened was the soundtrack <laughs> came out, and then, and they couldn't stop it. It right. was the first real like authentic punk rock it was authentic totally yeah, yeah. And, and you're you're part of you're part of that i mean in, yeah. in in the contributions of getting certain artists on there right yeah yeah no it was um it was a trip and and in the dogtown boys like i i was i was talking to you about this like i used to surf there and then uh, suicidal tendency was on the album and, yep. and then it came full circle you know first time i heard those guys was that was that soundtrack yeah so so and, cool yeah i mean an- another movie with a Phenomenal soundtrack, I think, is tough to her. And, and, and I didn't realize that that was so cool on the soundtrack level, and it was too. I, I mean, mean, I think Jim it Carroll. is. Yes. Jim Carroll. Jim Carroll. I, I remember meeting meeting Jim Carroll, and I was like, I mean, he was like an alien. I remember like being in the makeup room with him, and, and he would tell me stories. And I mean, it was yeah, I've done some really great things. Like, I mean, they're they're maybe it's obscure. Like people, maybe not everybody knows who Jim Carroll is, but. He was, I mean, Basketball Diaries. I think, I think mainstream audiences will know him through Basketball Diaries, right. but he's so much more than that. I, I mean, I got into the poet scene, the poetry scene. I used to go to see him, you know, and perform after that. Oh, wow. wow, cool. And I mean, obviously, um, you know, Marianne Faithful's on that soundtrack right. too. Uh, the local Hollywood band, uh, oh, uh, Jack, Jack Mack and the Heart Attack. G U F F. You're so tough. It's I so cheesy it. in a good so way, so cheesy, yeah. but in a fun way. It was. I mean, that, I remember that scene because like all the guys were the horns, all the horn players, and it was. I mean, did they do that live or was it pre-recorded? They did. They, they pre-recorded. Okay, but it was funny. Okay, you know, it was, well, I mean, it, it was it, funny. I, so I per, we we love Tough Turf. It, there's so much to love about Tough Turf yes. on so many levels. Okay, how did that come about? How did it come about? Um, I did. I auditioned. I think it was on a, a Sunday in Venice. No, it wasn't on a Sunday <laughs> in Venice, but it was it was New World Production, so that was more legit, you know. Mm-hmm. And I auditioned. Your agent was okay with that one. Yeah, she was okay with that. It's a and, Monday in, yeah, a, in an office. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And Don, Donald Borchers, he's who's the producer now. Don has done like he did every like so many movies of that era: Two Moon Junction, Children of the Corn. Yes, I think he directed Children of the Corn with John Philbin. That's right. <laughs> That's right, and yeah. every, and everybody was connected. The other thing is that all of all of us, all of the kid actors and the, the actors in general, there weren't as many actors in Hollywood. Yeah, right. And so everybody knew each other. Right. And it was like it was like a smaller and and I think I don't know. It makes me it makes me feel old or something, or maybe, maybe sound old. But it's like it was a different day. It was a different era. It was. It was. Yeah. I mean, there's no there's no two ways about it. I, yeah. I mean, you were talking about kind of the just to jump back for a second. Yeah sort of the stigma of being an actor and a musician. Right, right, right. But there was that stigma that we've heard about, like, doing doing TV. That's right. Oh, well, yeah. Right? Like, yeah. so is that something where, oh like, God. you know, you're, you're in this small-knit community where everyone is just like, do films, do films, do films, do I, films. I've got a story about that. I've got a, a Repo Man, an Alex Cox story. Please forgive me, Alex, because we, went, we, ended, <laughs> we, ended up be, we ended up making up after seven years of not talking. Oh, wow. Because at, at, wow. at the Sid and Nancy uh, went to the uh, New York Film Festival, and all of us from Repo Man, like everybody, we were all friends. We were all really close friends. I remember flying back to New York on a flight where everybody was from Repo Man to go to the New York Film Festival and, and, and support him and Abby Worrell. And so um, we go there, we see the film, and there was a green room afterwards, and I was in the green room. And the only people in the green room were Chloe Webb, uh, Gary Gary Oldman, and Alex Cox and me. Mm. And Alex, Gary Oldman. Yeah, Gary Oldman. Yeah. He was played he, Sid, he was yeah. Sid. Not Gary Coleman. To be no, clear. Yeah, yeah, Gary yes. Gary Oldman. Yes. yes, Gary Oldman makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. So Gary was. Um, <laughs> so we're standing there. Talk about Nancy. <laughs> 
right. so we were standing there and Alex says to him because he hadn't seen me in a while and he says to me um, so what are you doing Olivia what, what you, what's going on and I said <laughs> I love your Alex <laughs> so what are you, so, and I, and what are you said, doing Olivia I said oh I just I just um, got signed to the television show Fame and Alex there's a pause a dramatic pause and he, and he says oh some of us resort to television. And he turned his back. Oh, he turned his back and walked away. Jerk. He turned his back and walked away. And this was in front of Carrie Holman, Chloe Webb, and I was and I just oh, I just man. I just felt like such a jerk. And wow. so I didn't I didn't talk to him. I didn't we didn't speak for seven years. Like I did I did not talk yeah. to him. Yeah. Understandably then, so. I was I, and then um, we had a <laughs> premiere for a movie that I did. I was in this film Floundering, which was uh, Peter McCarthy directed it mm. from Repo, Repo Man, uh, and I had a sex scene in it. it was like the only film, like I had a sex scene in Repo Man that was cut. Yeah. Nobody's ever seen it, but this one was not cut with James Lagro, and it was kind of a comical. It was it was a comedy sex scene, but it was a heavy sex scene. Anyway, we're out in the lobby after that screening, and Alex comes up to me and he says. He goes, you did such a great job in this film, and you've grown into a woman, and, and we made up, you know. <laughs> so like, that was, was that an apology? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Like, you're still a dick, you've dude. You've grown yeah, yeah. into a woman, <laughs> and I think it's... Sorry. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it was, I mean, you know, but he was outspoken, you know. It was just yeah. like, it was, and, but I was, you know, I was, see, I was really sensitive, and I, and I did. People didn't know it. Like I would take everything to heart. Right. Yeah. And I would. I would act like a tough guy. And it would go right into your stomach. Exa- exactly. <laughs> and then you would. Exactly. Yes, it's got to go somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. And, that, and that was my story. And I was. And I was. Yeah. Like, I was. I would. I would not process it. I would like. It'd be on the inside and just right. hold it in. Right. That's my story. Oh man. Brutal. I. Uh, well, <laughs> I. You know. <laughs> it, it. What I. What I'm. I'm speechless right now because I'm thinking about tough turf and I'm thinking about but that story is insane uh, <laughs> and, and but I'm and floundering is a great film too by the way thank you um, that's why you're speechless no but <laughs> but I was thinking about going back to tough turf there yeah. is this the couple musical sequences one with Jim Carroll obviously in this warehouse where you're shooting yeah this, yeah uh, and Robert Downey Jr. is playing the drums yes <laughs> um, and it, everyone's dancing it's like a choreographed dance it's scene ridiculous. <laughs> but yet, there's like kind of this real tension going on was, with uh, Paul Monet's yes uh, Paul I th- yeah. Oh, I wanted to say that he he another, another person was Panchito Gomez. Was yes. in the, he was in school with me. He was like uh, in not kindergarten, but like from third grade on. He, we were in that professional school in New York. Together. Really? Yeah. Oh, like, wild. It, yeah. So, and I, I'm gonna say this. I smoked my first cigarette with Panchito in the stairwell. <laughs> of yeah, I, well, I did, amazing. and that was. I mean, I, I mean, love that actor. He's, he's great. Amazing. So good. He's so yeah. good. Yeah, he's so good. But <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah. Um, I mean, was that a fun shoot? That, that's that shoot was fun. I mean, it was the whole thing was uh, it was it was it was weird because it was like all kids. It was like it was not an adult movie. It was like kind no, of, right. we, so legit teen movie. Yeah. Yeah, and so we so I basically stayed with it was with Robert Downey Jr. Stayed at the Chateau Marmont okay. the whole summer. Oh. And um, I was seeing with Robert Downey Jr., but we were not lovers. Really. I'm friends with Sarah Jessica Parker. They were, and we were just best friends. And yeah. we stayed there. And um, it was, it was, a, it was a, it was kind of a party. It was like, it oh, was, but, wow. we, but we were really good actors. Like we showed up and we did. I mean, but we, it was crazy. Yeah, it was haunted. The Chateau Marmont was haunted. Like it really was haunted. Yeah. So, I mean, did you see anything? Or I heard. So, so I had, we had a ghost that. Um, Every single every single morning at three o'clock in the morning, there would be a knock on the door on our hotel room door, and I would and there'd be nobody there every single morning. And you would get would I someone go, get up to answer yeah, the go door up and, and answer, no one, nobody's there. And you look down the classic hall. James Spader pranks. Yeah, <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> and, and, Jane, and James was staying at the hotel and Jane, yeah. James was like the only one of us I think that wasn't partying. Like yeah, he was, he was good because he would stay he would go to sleep early and then wake up it's at three in the morning. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Run away. Exactly. Uh, yeah. that's hilarious. And he's one of my favorite actors. I mean, well, he and he plays against type in that because he was like the pretty boy. Well, he's had yeah. an edge to th- this film. Is interesting to me because. Um, it is a teen drama, right. but also dark. Yeah, like, dark. Like, it gets really dark. It is dark. And, and, and I, I've watched that. I watched that recently on a on a thing with YouTube. Like, you, you can talk when, when you're watching it, you know? Uh-huh. And like a commentary I, I, or something. Yeah, and, and I, was, I was like, wow, this is, like, this is pretty dark. And, and James was, like, he, he was played, like, this rebel, like a rebel guy. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It was, uh... <laughs> 
I'm just thinking, I think there's one scene that cracks me up though. With Robert Downey Jr., the Dobermans with the dog. Yeah. Yes. It's like, it's, yeah. it's silly. But <laughs> I, mean, I just remember. Well, that's the thing that. too. It, it, another, reason, another reason why I love this movie is because it's dark, <laughs> it's dramatic, but there's great comedy moments too. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was. Me, I was kind of the, me and Robert were the the comic relief. So you were. Yeah. You guys get to go to the country club. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. You know. <laughs> how, how much of what you were doing was just like improvised in the country club? A lot. Um. Oh, that. Yeah, that was pretty improvised. That was improvised because that scene. But a lot of it, we went we went by script. Like Repo Man. I'm just gonna jump yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. That was um a a lot of improv- improvising. Okay. okay. Like Alex would have us go. We we would have have a scene, and he he would keep rolling camera after the scene was over. Mm. And a lot of that was used in the film. Oh, cool. Yeah. So um, the country club was improvised. The country club, there's a, a story there. Um, it was the Riviera Country Club. And that was in my area that I grew up. It was the Palisades and I was West LA. We used to go icing. You know, do you know what icing is? Um, no. Mm-mm. It was, you'd get a huge ice block, a p- piece of ice, and we'd, we'd go down the golf course, we'd go down the hills icing. Oh, I think so, my brother oh. did that. So we destroyed the golf course at the, at the Riviera Country Club. What? But I also graduated from oh, my goodness. school at that country club. Oh, really? That, it was a private school. Yeah. And, and, then, and, then, and then I had the scene that we did. So wow. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, so all the stuff, you're kind of talking about fellatio and like all this to these uptight folks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Folks. But it's, like, it's amazing. It's just really... It was fun. That was, yeah. I mean, I... I I loved I loved being the comic relief, and I, and that, that was the thing about my career, my acting career that was so cool was that um, I I did a lot of comedy, but then I did Little House on the Prairie, right. which was not comic at all. <laughs> it was like, and that's why I wanted to do that's why I want, really wanted to do that part that role because I wanted to do something dramatic, yeah. and I did it. I know? mean, it was dramatic. To the point where you've got fans crying when they meet you. Yeah, and, and you are alive. Yeah, I know. I've got they, they, I've got some weird fans too. I've got some. Ba- I've been, I'm I'm being stalked. Um, <laughs> I'm being stalked. There's two stalkers I know, but the one it, it's like it, when I was in Oklahoma. Currently being stalked. Yeah, I guess so because the, oh, the, man. The, the, he's like really far away. But in Oklahoma, the promoter for our show and they didn't tell me this. Um, the, uh, they got an anonymous le- letter. Yeah. And they, they were like, "Why do you have Olivia Barish in this um, event?" And and then he said, the guy said, um, "I don't like her character in Little House on the Prairie." And he goes, "But that's okay. I have a gun, and I'm going to come shoot oh. her and kill, and kill her." Get I swear to God. So, so I had so they didn't tell me. No one wanted to tell me that I had a death threat. But I had the sheriff deputies with me at the event, and I didn't know why. I thought, "Oh, this is a little much," because I had I had a little bit of it, that. But, oh my and then God. they followed me to the bathroom every time. I'm like, "What's going right. on?" And yeah. then they told me. Was the guy? Was it signed John <laughs> Wayne Gacy Jr. It, it was. Or it was really creepy. And, that, and I'm so oh sorry. Man. And they and they and I've had a detective out here get, set it up where he's from. To, to go talk to him and his mother. He lives with his mom. He's personally he disabled. It's like, it's yeah. bad though. And yeah. that doesn't mean he can't come kill me. It's like, he right. could. No. He right. could. No, just because, <laughs> just because he yeah. is this way doesn't mean he's I know. non-threatening. And that's, right. and that's Even the, disabled people are, can, can be able to kill you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, exactly. I was, I was looking for the joke there, but I didn't quite <laughs> land it. But, you know. It uh, landed enough. No, it's, <laughs> it's kind of, I want to rewrite it. but The detective it, tries to tell me, oh, He's in a wheelchair, and he's, he's not in right. a wheelchair. He's not in a wheelchair. He told me that. He didn't tell me that last year. Like, he's been going on for a while. So. I just want to understand the motivation of, like, let's not tell her I know th- see, that somebody could kill her yeah, at any I, moment. I, let's I, just surround her with police. Yeah. It will act like everything is normal. <laughs> and then when she goes to the bathroom, just follow her in. <laughs> that will make her and, uncomfortable yes, at all. Yeah. And don't do it for anybody else. And then yeah. and then if she asks, no, just, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe yeah, eventually I have, I have no idea what yeah. they were th- I think I think that it was... <laughs> It happened right before the event. Like th- there was a line already, and they didn't want to. Maybe they didn't want to ruin the event. They didn't want to ruin. Ma- I mean, I don't know. Wow. I think I think it would have helped. Oh him man, know. those death threats are always I, I, ruining events. I know. And, I think yeah. it would have helped him know because, I I mean, I've yes. been prepared. Like it, I had the the, the sheriff right. deputy was taking pictures, selfies with me for, for me and of me, and I wouldn't have had him doing that if I knew this <laughs> was going to kill me. You know. Oh my god. <laughs> so, right. Olivia, just get right. over here. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. in Oklahoma. Yeah. <laughs> so just for a before and after. Like, what? Yeah, Why? Yeah. What do you mean? 
Don't tell yeah. her because you she fan. might cancel. She might not want yeah. to come. I know. Potentially yeah. and understandably so. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. But I'm a trooper, you know. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, now you're a certified trooper. Did they give you a badge or a yeah, sticker, like a death threat bonus? I know. Maybe? Like a, yeah. Right. Yeah. A little. I never. I never had. I never had a death threat. I had. So I had. I had another. You know, interesting fan for years, for like ten years, and I thought he went away. Like, um, he was, he was, he okay. So he wrote fan fiction, and it was oh. from. These are all from Little House on the Prairie. Like, I get that. So, wow. yeah, um, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's a yeah. huge following. Well, this guy, good and bad. this <laughs> guy is like, um, he's my biggest fan, and and he and he's, he really he's unhappy that that my character died. And then he um, had a painting commission, a oh. commissioned painting of me, and he asked me, and he wanted he wanted me to see it, and, and I, I saw that picture, and it was it was I, it was weird. It was like it looked like my dress. You could see my panties through my dress. There was something. It was weird. It was what were, was your care? Was it is was it you from the show? From the show, and he, he asked no, me. It's be, creepy he, at all? And yeah, and, so, and, and he asked me, <laughs> like, do you want to do you want to wear the blue gingham dress or do you want to wear the no. brown? You know, and so I thought, you know, I thought Ugh. this guy's harmless, and then I saw the picture and I thought that's weird, and I thought, oh, I'm yeah. just imagining it. Like right. I, I would always blow it off, and then, and then oh. he says, okay, so. Um, I'm gonna. I have this fan fiction. Is he of, communicating with you, like uh, no, on the it, phone, it, it, no, or like are you? No, it was, no. Um, it was it was text. It was like on Facebook. So he was in my Facebook. He was on your site. Facebook group. So, and okay. I, I thought everything okay. was fine. So yes. He's, yes. Then, so now he's like, um, I want to put up the fan fiction story about you and Albert. It's if Sylvia lived, right? And this is different episodes. And because the first episode is, is going to be the wedding. Of, of Albert and Sylvia, okay. And so I, I think, well, let me, you know, let me read it. And so I read it. It's fu- it's harmless, whatever. Yeah. And so I go, yeah, you can put up. Then he puts up the second episode without having me read it first, and I, I didn't know it was up. And I, I have a guy. I had a guy who was doing my fan site, and he calls me. And he goes, Olivia. He goes, I'm gonna send you something. And he goes, I don't want you to freak out. He goes, but you have to see it. He goes, I've, I've gotten it down. <laughs> like, okay, what is it? <laughs> So, uh, it's um, it's the next episode of if so if Sylvia lived, and it's um, the the Albert and Sylvia's honeymoon. Okay. Oh no. It was triple X rated. I mean, it was like it was so it was so <laughs> oh, raunchy. It was like it was like the I never. I mean, I it was so gnarly. God. It was gnarly, and and, oh, then, and, and then and then. We kept getting it taken down. So my my friend James, who was he he, every time he takes down, it would go back up, go back, and then, and then we kept kicking the guy off of the of the website, and he kept coming up with different names. Oh my and then God. I finally, so what I finally <coughs> did was I acted as my agent. I wrote him an email from a different email, you yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought, you know, I scared him off. Like I, I said, a little cease and desist. Yeah, I, sort yeah of, exactly. Yeah, good call. And, yeah. the, that, and that's what I did. And so yeah. he 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 went away. Went away, sort of. What he did was he started his own Sylvia and Albert fan site on Facebook, and and then <sighs> it, I find out. So I, but I think he's gone, and I'm, I'm like, it's been like ten years, and then I'm talking. Fast forward, I'm talking to Allison Ongram a few months ago, and she mentions she which she's talking about you have weird fans, you know, oh, from the house show. No. And she goes, and then and there's this one guy, and she says his name. I'm like. You know, blah, blah, blah. And she goes, oh, yeah. She goes, he's been bothering us for the last 10 years. He has been trying to get to her and to Dean, to all the people from Little House to get to, get to me. And he actually shows up at events, and he says he's an agent. I mean, no. Yeah. So that. Oh. So we. So I had extra security. That's what I thought yeah. the extra security was for. Well, yeah, that's understandable too. Yeah. <laughs> so, my God. Oh my God. Yeah. See, this is the, this is the thing. We do the yeah. show. Yeah. And we have connections. Obviously, we're, we've been vetted. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, but it's a weird world. Don't put this on us. Don't even connect no, us saying, to that guy. I'm saying to like. People, if you're a fan of someone, just give them their space. I know. Don't, yeah. We've been don't vetted. Be weird. <laughs> Good God. Don't be weird. No, but yeah. you know, like, it, it, I, when, when should we I bring re- out my fan fiction now? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Weird yeah. time. Uh, but yeah. anyway, here's my portrait um, yeah. of uh, yeah. Lee Ving from no, Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I, I worked with him. I know you did. Two uh, two things. I worked with him on Fame. Yep. And then, um, and he, he was on the soundtrack of We Remember. There's something else. There's oh, a, and it's there's a, a show. Film. The horror film. Grave. 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 Offering, Stalker over yeah. here. <laughs> no, I, this is I, weird. I that. I'm going to slide over here. Vinegar, yeah, yeah. vinegar Syndrome put that out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let's talk about... 
<laughs> us normal fans. Right. And no. Well, Lee, no. Lee is the one, another one of those guys who, like, I, love it. I, I found out about fear through watching him in the love wild, him. uh, the wildlife and, um, streets of fire. I love you him. Know, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. It's a, he's a great actor as well. He's, he's amazing. But when you mentioned Rick Springfield, yeah. be, he was like, I love Rick Springfield. Yeah, I'm a too. huge fan, but there was a, there was a, there's a big it, piece where they're like, Oh, he's cheese ball. It was pop. Oh, it yeah. Was, it's pop. It was very pop they don't, that, but then you realize yeah. the guy's a phenomenal guitar player. I mean, I, 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 I Jesse's Girl. I mean, come on. Jesse's, Jesse's Girl is great. a killer song. Fantastic. He, I mean, he worked a lot with uh, Sammy Hagar, too, yes. on that first record. Yes. I think that's why. Not that for, no. It's not his first record, but Working Class Dog was Yeah, his yeah. Hit. Now, he, he was on General Hospital, right? That's yeah. how, and I knew him. So yeah. I knew him because my best girlfriend from high school was Danielle Von Zernick, and she was. Oh, she yeah. Paid, she played on General Hospital. Yeah. So I knew him. So She's it's like. In La Bamba as well. La Bamba, and a, a yeah. Bu- joysticks, she, she, I think she was in. Yeah. And, yeah. Anyways. So yeah, everyone oh, loves it? joysticks. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on, it's an arcade. Yeah. Um, 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 thank you for coming on our show Yay. and putting this out into the universe. Yeah. Uh, I feel like this yep. is the beginning of many more opportunities to have you on and it's talk cool. pop culture and all sorts yeah. of fun things. Yeah, it's really it's like you are so freaking cool. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> I'm, I'm, you live I'm that the, life. You yeah. weathered the storm. You lived three yeah. lives by the t- age of 21. I weathered the storm. Yes. Yeah. I weathered the storm, and I'm coming out you, of the storm alive. You broke on through to the and other I'm side. Go, I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be back in in your faces again. Hell yeah, and that's what's love happening. It. Thank you, Olivia. I love it. Well, yeah, we're happy to help facilitate. Thank you so much. However we can. Thank you. Thank you for the green juice. <laughs> of course. 